Shem Nasim Natsliach. Schus, all the Tzadikim, Schus Rebbeinu Nachum, Rebbein Fege. So, so what we're going to do tonight, hopefully, if we have enough time, there's two Torahs in Lekut Moran, the second volume in Lekut Moran. There's Torah Chaf He, which speaks about Hit Boredut. And there is Torah Chaf Vav, which actually speaks about the Indian of drinking and getting drunk, and how Rebbein Nachman views that. Both important topics, especially for our times. So let's start with the first topic of uh, Torah Chaf He <coughs> and Kuti Tinyana. So Rabbi Nachman over here says, Ha hisbodedus hi ma'ala elyona ugdola min hakol. Just that one line, you can just read that one line and just fall flat on your face. Like, bottom line is, Rabbi Nachman says, the highest avoda that you can imagine, the, the levels of devakis that you could be davak to Kadesh Baruch Hu, is if you want to use a medium to get to that and something that has all the milers within it is is this path of Esbodus. We have to know one thing, like we're getting together here at Baruch Hashem once a week to learn the Maran. We want to learn the ways of Rabbi Nachman of Breslov to see his Eitzot. So we can't really go on, really, without without stressing the fact that Rabbi Nachman's whole Indian was really emphas- emphasized Especially when it came to Hitzbodedut, that one should make time to speak to his creator. And we'll see exactly you know, what that entails, how that should be done, how could, what's the best way to do it, and if, if it's not the best way, how to, you know, whatever you can do. But, uh, but this first line, it's very significant, that Hitzbodedut, hu ma'al elyona, it's, it's, a, it's a very lofty ma'ala, virtue, ugadola minakol, and it's greater than everything else. Now, what is this hisbodus? What does it entail? Dahainu. What this means is, likboa lo al kol panim, sha o yoter, leit boded levado. That a person should at least, and the Rebbe says at least, al kol panim means at least, an hour or more, right? So a lot of people think, wow, well, an hour. You know? The Rebbe is saying minimum, you know, just you got to do an hour. You know, people think that. I'll be honest with you, if when a person is outside the world of his bodhidus and he doesn't do it, and he's not accustomed to it, it seems like like a mountain. It seems like, oh my gosh, an hour, you know, like, it seems really crazy. But once a person enters that world and he starts this practice, and we'll talk about ways, eights is how to open one's heart, how to, how to get into the practice, how to make it easier in some, some levels, um, you'll see that it's not as difficult as you think it is that these 60 minutes that should be acquired, that you, you dedicate to sit in front of Hashem. So he says, an hour or more, to, to, uh, to do his bodhidus. Now the word hit uh, literally comes from the word levadad, which means like alone, seclusion, private. Private time between you and Hashem. Right? That you should be levado, in a room or in a field. Now, now in other places, Rabbi Nachman speaks about the benefits of being in a field, being in nature, when it comes to Esbodedus. And he says, you know, for example, we know that Chazal say that there is no Esav that does not have an angel that's above it, that hits it, gives it makah, and encourages it to grow. Right? So meaning in all the asavim, in all the trees, all the leaves that's out there, there are, there are forces, there's energies within them that's constantly causing them to grow. And it happens to be that those, that those leaves and those blades of grass, every single one of them has some sort of type of like neshama, so to speak. And they also, Rabbi Nachman says, praise God. Right? He actually was walking one time with Rabbi Nathan, a student, and he said to him that uh, he smiled and he, and, he, and he looked over at the grass and he said, if you could only hear the shir ha'asavim, the song of the grass, the song of the trees, if you could hear that, you should know that, like he says, that when one goes to do its parudu within nature, just like all these blades of grass and these trees and these leaves are, are, are singing to Hashem. So when a Jew comes by there, that the, that the Baal Shem Tov teaches a Jew is like a microcosm of the world, or really a microcosm of the universe, Hashem created man from every element in creation. So when he's coming to speak to his creator, 
then all those blades of grass and those trees, they also sort of like jump in to his davening also, into that vehicle that now he's using through his speech to connect to, to the master of the universe. So a lot of times a person might feel more open when he speaks to Hashem in a natural setting, right? Uh, he speaks about, in general, that it's better to be in a place that is not, um, that people aren't around, that's, that's best if you can. But if not, right, we, he also says that, uh, you know, you could be amongst, you could be in a crowded room. And you could just pretend like, let's say you're like opening a safer, but you're really doing a spotter. So these days with the phone, you know, there's a lot of things you could do. You know, people put a Bluetooth on, they walk around Manhattan and they're yapping away. Person could could pretend uh, like he's talking, but he could talk to Hashem. He could be doing a spot this. We used to have phone booths, but now it's a lot easier, right? So, so anyway, in any case, this is a tremendous mile, and he says that, uh, that it should be done in such a way. Now, what is the etzem nature of the spotters itself? One should should explain his words. He should converse between him and, 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 and the master of the universe. B'tanot vam talaot with with uh, you know sort of like not arguments but sort of like you know just like a child nudges his father you know he makes different like you know I think you should give me candy because you know so he says you could do that too right that's what we're supposed to do but divrechein veritzui with words of grace veritzui opius that you could you could appease Hashem that you could so to speak win over Hakadosh Baruch Hu, that he should have compassion on you. To, to beg and plead before the master of the universe that he should bring you close to him to avod Hashem in truth and everyone desires to be balanced he says the main way that we can achieve this balance is if we, have, if we ask Hashem you have to ask the person has to open his mouth then he says, not only that, but the, but the, this language, this this um, this sicha, this speech that you have between you and Hashem should be in the language that you're used to speak. Like he says, for example, in our town, we speak in Yiddish, so so one should speak in Yiddish in tefillah, right? Or wherever you're from, if it's English is the easiest language, then English. If it's if it's I don't know Bukharian, it's Bukharian. If it's Persian, it's Persian. Whatever it may be. Why? Why should it specifically be in your language and not in in Lashon Hakodesh? You know, we would think that Lashon Hakodesh one should strive to speak in Lashon Hakodesh, but the Rebbe says no. He says why? Ki be Lashon Hakodesh kashelo lefaresh kol sichato. When it comes to Lashon Hakodesh, it's not easy to explain everything you have to say. Even if you learn it, it's still it's still not coming from your own word, so to speak. You still have to figure out exactly how to put it together. And if you do it in a language that you're not so accustomed to, then your heart is not going to be drawn after your words. Since you're not so accustomed to that language. Because, because let's face it, we don't speak, unfortunately, in Lashon HaKodesh, that's not the language we were used to speaking. Of Lashon Ashkenaz, but in but in Yiddish or in whatever language, English, whatever it may be, Shemisaprim Mudabrim Bo, the language that you're accustomed to speak, Kal Karov Yoter Lashaber Libo. It's it's a lot easier to to break one's heart to the Master of the Universe. Yeah. Um. So it seems like there are like two parts of his Gordus. Like there's the meditation, like the thinking about Hashem's creation, and like the creation as a whole, and then the speaking, like trying to ask for things you want, or trying to appease. If you don't mind me asking, where did you see the meditation part? Well, it says, Right, to be alone. And then he says, Right. Meaning, for the purpose of to express your words. Right. Being alone for the purpose of expressing your words. Meaning, meaning that there's a difference between silent meditation and meditation, this type of meditation that we're talking, that you actually converse. There's a difference. 
Why is it there? I spoke to uh, a certain mashpi of mine, and he said, why can't a person do his brother this? And uh, just be silent. Don't talk. So he says, you should know. Yeah, I'm confused. So according you talk or you do not talk? Then so, you so, do. Like you said, it will afarish sikhoto means that you should, you should talk. So the question is why? So, so, so this mashpi of mine told me, he said that just like we know, Hashem didn't think and create the world. Hashem spoke and he created the world. So he says, but, so you have to realize that from your speech, you actually create, you create things. Just like, like, you know, like we know that uh, the, the world, we learned last week that everything was created with the Asara Mamaros, the 10 utterances in creation. So, so we know, right, so we know that, that there's an energy of creating when you speak. And the Rebbe explains this in another lesson in the Kutsi Maran. So there's, there's a specific, the goal is to be able to open your mouth and to be able to connect through that medium of speech. And we'll see, let's see if a person can't speak, right? There might be, there might be situations like that. The Rebbe is going to speak about that right now. So he says, um, Okay, Ubelashon Ashkenaz, the first word of the line is Murgalbo. Ubelashon Ashkenaz, Yochol Lefaris Kol Sichato. But with, if it's a language that you're accustomed to, he's saying Yiddish, but in any language that you're accustomed to, that's easier for you to express the, the, the conversation that you want to have between you and Hashem. The et kol asher im levavo yasiach v'yisaper lefana v'yitbarach. And the purpose of this is that whatever exists in your heart, you should bring out in speech between you and Hashem, in front of Hashem. Hein charata u'tshuva ala avar. Whether that be, um, let's say, let's say things that, uh, let's say, sins that a person has done in the past that he wants to do tshuva for. He has, let's say, certain things that he's ashamed of to address those things, to face Hashem about those things, whether if it's that, vehein bakasha tachanunim lizakot lit kareve lovit barach mayom ulala vehemet. Or whether if it's a request that you're begging Hashem that you should, be, you should have the merit to come close to Him from now on, every day that you should be attached to Hashem in truth. And, and in such a fashion, everyone according to his level. Now, it's interesting, you know, like the Rebbe doesn't, he doesn't really, uh, you know, he sort of assumes like we're all sort of like Malachim, because like, you know, it seems like he, he's not saying, oh, you know, and if you need Parnassah, speak about Parnassah. And he doesn't really stress the other things. He doesn't say about, you know, like, let's say, uh, different other, let's say, physical things. But, the, but it seems like the main focus that the Rebbe is saying is that it's that should be around that, that you should be coming close to Hashem. You know, sometimes, sometimes people could could sort of shift their whole focus in avodas Hashem. You know, there's some people that you know they're very sweet Jews, they're very holy. You know, but uh, but coming to shul for them and doing the avoda in a basic knesses is revolving for the goal of that how am I going to open my channels of blessings through this, right? You know, meaning like um, by me, for example, there's certain mentalities, like, you know, let's say, certain balabatim, that by me, let's say, I don't know, buying p'tichat eichal, or by me uh, getting the aliyah, or by me, uh, you know, uh, standing in Shemun with my arms like this, but my focus is that Hashem, you know, Send me the money. You know what I mean? So to speak. That's very nice. And we're supposed to come to Kaddish Baruch Hu with our requests for physicality. 100%. You're supposed to. You know? Like the Rebbe says, whatever's in your heart, you have to speak about. But, but overall, you know, the, the, the hope and the dream is that from, from, from a Jew spending time with Hashem every single day, imagine if you speak to Hashem every day an hour and you're facing Hashem, automatically you'll see that the Hispodotus refines you also. And your goals start to shift. You know, a child, a child grows up and he's like, you know, I wish I had a Ferrari. You know, like that's my, like that's my Gun Aiden. You know, I wish I had this Ferrari. And then like he starts getting older and then he's like, you know, maybe Ferrari is not the most important thing in life. You know what I mean? Or whatever it is, or the basketball player or whatever, you know? So, so we, on a certain sense, we're also like that. 
the more we're engaged in his spodidus, there's more hashba that comes onto our souls. There's an influence that we start realizing the tachlis. The Rebbe's whole thing was tachlis. Tachlis means what's the goal? Realize the mission that we're on in this world. And don't live your life carelessly. Because if you live with that and you're, and you're engaged in Avodos Hashem, and you open your heart specifically to Hashem to speak to Him every day, you're a different Jew. You walk, you go to business differently. You come home Shabbos differently. Everything from A to Z changes. I have friends of mine that told me after they've come to Breslov that not only it's changed their lives, but they've noticed that when they walk away from Rabbeinu's Eitzes, of his advice of not engaging in Esporidus, they might be practicing Judaism, but slowly, slowly they see themselves like they're, they don't have a relationship with God anymore. There's many people, unfortunately, they're, they're, you know, they've been davening for years, they've been going to shul, davening three minyanim a day, but have they been speaking to Hashem? They've been reading the Siddur every day, but have they been, have they, have they been like really, really speaking to Hashem? It's a very unfortunate thing. A lot of people read the Siddur. They, they, they say over the sitter. They're not. They're not opening their hearts. Now it's 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 not so simple because, you know, like um, you know, the Anshi Knesset Gdola established that we should say Shmona Esri three times a day, right? So so we, it's a chiyuv. We have to. But but on one hand, sometimes it might not be able if we're not doing it properly. We might not be opening our our hearts to Hashem through those words. There might be other things that we need to talk about. You know, there might be things that, uh, who knows, from childhood, there might be temptations and desires that we want to get rid of, and we're not addressing that in Shema Koleinu. You know what I mean? That we need sometimes when a person, like, especially with this practice, every day a person speaks to Hashem, he opens his heart to Hashem in a little private time, you'll see that after a while, it's almost like this light of tshuva comes inside of you. It has this unbelievable power, because with these words that you're saying in front of Hashem, lofty, tremendous lofty things happens in the heavens. Uh, the Rebbe is going to explain. Any questions, or should we go on? Okay? Okay. And this practice, he gedola b'mala me'od me'od, the Rebbe uses the Lashon Ma'od Ma'od. It's so, it's mamish awesome. It's like Gavaldik. It's, it's a tremendous Eitzah to come close to Hashem. Kizoti Eitzah Wow. We have to realize that if a person wants to draw close to Rebbe Nachman, he's, he's, he's really, he's throwing, these words are like bricks of gold that he's sending him. This is the golden path. You know, a person wants to be dubbed to the side, you have to see, he's stressing, you should know, for the rabbi, every word that he said in the Kutz Maran came with tremendous mysterious nefesh. You know, he could have said just, uh, it's great, ma'od. But he says, ma'od, ma'od. And then he goes even further, he says, but who derech ve'etza tova, it's, it's, it's unbelievable advice. Ma'od. <laughs> it's just like, the rabbi is like stressing, like this is really what Yiddishkeit is about. Le'itzkar ve'lo v'itzbar, to come close to Hashem. Kizoti Eitzaklalit is the general advice. It's a type of advice. General means it's the all-inclusive advice. Shekol el hakol. It includes everything. His bodhidus is A to Z. It includes everything. Ki al kol mash yech sarlo ba'avodos Hashem. Because every single thing that you're lacking in avodos Hashem to be complete. And, you, and we have to realize that if we are connected to desires and temptations, it means that in a certain level we feel that we're lacking something. Because if we're not lacking something, then we wouldn't need any, any temptation or desire that's, that's forbidden to us. So, so for every one of these things that, that one is lacking in Avodos Hashem, the Eitzah is, Rabbi Nachman says, it's included, it can be filled through this vehicle of Ispodorus. Or imhu rachok legamri, let's say a person he's completely far from Hashem. We call the call. He's off. He's completely off. You know, he's uh, you know riding the waves. You know, on the other side of town, so to speak. Right? Mavadosi is barach. Al hakol on everything. Yefaresh sichaso v'yivakish mit mit is barach. Person can can open his mouth and he can start making that link between himself and the kadosh baruch 
And by the way, we, we saw last week that it said that uh, even if a person is in impurity itself, remember, we were discussing that if a person fell into averas, into dark, filthy places, that the Rebbe himself gave an unbelievable etzah, that he says that um, right there, mamish, in the impurity, at that time, your person, if he realizes his neshama, he becomes conscious of, like, where am I holding in this world, like, what's happening to me? He says, right then, you can use the vehicle of your mouth and you can ask Hashem, just simply, just ask Hashem, where are you? By you saying those words, remember we were learning last week, a person could come, could use the whole Yerida for the Tachlis of Aliyah. You can make that descent, that going down, for the purpose of coming back up. Many, many Balchuva that I know, they, the reason why they're mamish like flying in cloud nine is because of their downfall. They went to such pits and down there they were like, Hashem, where are you? And those words help them to open up all the gates to reach the highest heights. You can you can use your yurida. You have to you have to you have to realize that you have to you have to utilize it. You know it says that uh, the the Magad of Mezrich, it's this beautiful word. It says you know we see in davening, Mala Haretz Kinyanecha. We see in Dashachers every day that the land is filled of of your acquirings, right? Kinyan. So so he says there's another way to read it that Mala Haretz Kinyanecha. What? that the land is filled of, of ways how that we can acquire you. That how you could be kivyachal kone godliness. That you could acquire godliness in your life. How? You're walking the street. Perfect example. You're walking the street. You know, all of a sudden, a ton of temptation, somebody's not properly dressed, this that. You could be kone, crazy olamab, and closest to Hashem by looking down and not looking. It's unbelievable. There's a whole sefer called Taras HaKodesh. Two volumes, actually, from uh, Rabbi Aaron Roth, right? He has two volumes, all that, you know, about Kedusha, Sinayim, Shmir, Sabris, that what one can accomplish from when, let's say, he's tempted to give in to certain sin and he refrains the, the gates that opens up for a person. It's unbelievable, you know? We have no idea. So, so Mullah's Kinyanecha, the world is filled of ways how I can acquire a sham. But how am I going to utilize that? I have to be conscious. I have to be aware that I'm on a mission. Well, what are we going to do? We're just going to like chill in Olam Hazah. We're just going to chill for like 120 years. You know, how much? It's crazy. We have to utilize this time. How do you, how do you, become, how do you come out of this cycle of living your day-to-day -day life and actually living and breathing in a healthy way that you're alive, that you feel connected to Hashem? The Rebbe says the only way is to spoke is to speak. Open your mouth. But let's see, somebody might ask, what if you can't speak? Somebody told me, he said, I've sinned in front of Hashem. I can't open my eyes. I have nothing to say. The Rebbe says right now, he says, you should know that let's say sometimes you can't, your words are stuffed up, you can't even talk. And then you can't open your mouth at all. You can't even speak in front of Hashem at all. He says, you should know, nevertheless, even this in itself is, is tov me'od. The preparation that you went through, the fact that you sat and you were, you were sitting there in front of Hashem, you were prepared to speak, but even though you weren't zoche, words, you weren't zoche, the words should come out of your mouth, but the preparation that you did is tremendously precious in God's eyes and very beneficial for you. You sit there and you're desiring to speak, but you're not able to. This is very good, you should know. Even this. The Rebbe says not only that, but from this in itself, the fact that you can't talk, you could make a hisbodurus out of this in itself. What does he mean? That, that on this in itself you should cry out to Hashem. I'm so far from you. Look, Hashem, I'm so far. That I can't even speak in front of you. Look at me. Like, look what's happened to me. I can only sit in front of you. I can't talk. Like, shouldn't you save me? Please bring me close. You look where I've fallen. It's crazy. I can't even talk. You can make old feel out of that. You can, that in itself could be a spot of this. 
ויבקש מיתו יתמור רחמים ותחנום אין בגע השם לי פליז אף קמפנשן אבן מי שיחמור עליו ויבטח פיו שיוכל לפר שיחות על הפניו They should open your mouth and you can be able to express yourself to your creator You know how far we've fallen that like I could talk so much about stupidity about like you know the the you know like a movie that was 12 years ago you know with all the details yeah you remember that scene where well, I could talk for hours but when it comes to speaking from the bar all along it's a tar why you know, like, make a feel out of that Shem, look at me what's wrong with me this is the most basic necessity of a Jew is to talk to his creator if you look at the uh, it's, it, it, if you look at the Tanakh you know you see you I mean, you see all over Chumash, Reb Nassan in the Hakdamat Hishtab Chus and Nefesh brings from all over Tanakh, from the Avot, from this, that, that everyone was doing his Bodhidus. The Kleyoker says, he says, why do you think, why do you think all of our forefathers were shepherds? You know, why not go into something else? I don't know, be, you know, sell, you know, like, uh, go into the lumber business. Why, why, why Dafka like sheep, and, you know? So he says, he says, like, you know, because, because a shepherd has a lot of time. He travels in nature a lot. He, he mamish goes around. He goes into different places. He goes on the hills and valleys. He goes in nature, and he gives you time to speak to the Boreolam, to make beautiful songs, to talk. He said, all of our armies, and that's how they came, came close to Hashem. And he says, really, if, if we want to be close to Hashem, we have to do the same thing. We can't just limit our connection to God to just, okay, I pop in shul now and then, you know, I, you know, I try to open my heart a little bit. No, treat your soul to, to some private time to God. You deserve it. You, your soul deserves it. You know, do that kindness for your soul. But you give it a little time. Give a little healthy time with the Master of the Universe. Everything. Can you imagine? You could be whatever realm you're in, you know, it's your business, you're in sports, and whatever you may be ill, just focus you and help you become a better person. You can only gain from such a thing. And the Rebbe says, and sometimes you might not be able to talk, you should know that also in, in Hashem's eyes is tremendously precious. The fact that you desired, you wanted to talk, but you couldn't, even that's huge. In Sikha Saran, the Rebbe says it's considered korbanus. Like sacrifices, when you want to do something and you couldn't, and you're like, oh man, I wish I could. It's considered as if you brought a korban to the base of Miglish, you know, korban of sacrifices that they, they, they're kaparis for sins that we've done. So you should say, he says over here, he continues, with Dasha, Kama, Vakama, Tzadikim, Gedolim, before Samim, Sipru, many Tzadikim have already said, many Gedolim, Tzadikim have already said, Shalom, Bolim, Adrikasim, that they didn't come to their levels, their high levels that they've reached. Rak al Yidean Hagazu. Through this practice, that's how they got it. Through talking to Hashem. Vahamaskil Yovin Ma'atzma Godul Ma'alata and Dagazu. Somebody that's smart, that has Seichel, Rabbi Nachim says, he'll realize that this is a, a truly great practice. Ha'ola Lamala Lamala. That it goes to such heights. Vahu Davar Hashavah Lechol Nefesh. He says, this is something that's equal for everybody. Mikatan Vad Gadol. From children to, to old people. You know, my friend was on a bus in Mesh Aram, and, uh, you know, he knew a little bit about Rabbi Nachman, he learned a little bit, but it was, you know, it was really deep. He thought it was like, you know, it's only people that are, like, really holding, you know, in Kabbalah that can learn this stuff. So he was on a bus, you know, every day we'd come on the bus in Mesh Aram, there was, like, a seat next to some, like, little Hasidish kid. And it happened to me that every day we get on the bus, it's only, like, like the bus full, like, that seat's only open. You know, it's like, it's interesting, you know, something's going on. Right? So my life, you know, he sits down, so he looks over at the kid, he's like, you know, Shalom Aleichem, you know, like... Uh, who are you? What are you? You know, you're Hasidic. She's like, yeah, you know, yeah. And then, like, sweet little kid, you know, with, like, blonde pears. And then he's like, uh, what Hasidic are you shy to? And he's like, he's like, Breslov. And he's like, oh, Breslov? He's like, you? Like, you're, you're, you're Breslov, you know? He didn't know that, like, you know. So then he's like, yeah, he's like, um, so he's like, what do you do that's Breslov? He's like, you know, like, the Rabbi Nachman speaks about his spotedness, you know? He's like, he's like, do you do? He told him, he's like, uh, he told him, he told him, do you do his photo to this? Tell this little kid, right? So, so, so then the, kid, the little kid's like, he's like, yeah, sure. He's like, yeah, I do his photo to this. He's like, um, he's like, every day, you know, after school, it's like there's a little, like, you know, little park and it's got a tree. 
He's like, I go hide behind the tree and I talk to Hashem every day. So he said to him, really? He's like, he's like, what do you talk about? He's like, he's like, I ask Hashem, you know, to help, you know, my family, to help my brothers, my sisters, they should grow well, they should be healthy. He's went through this whole, like, such a beautiful thing, like a little kid, like six years old, like he does his photos in front of Hashem every day. So my friend, like, he's like, 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 if this little kid's doing his photos, like, I can't do his photos. He's like, he's a little kid. You know, it's such a beautiful, basic thing, you know. I was trying to teach my kid, you know, uh, my little Nachman. I was, I was teaching him that, you know, to, to, that we should thank Hashem, that we should be able to, uh, you know. So one time, you know, we had a trip, you know, like we were in the, we went to the park. So I said, Nachman, you know, Abba sometimes comes here. I showed him between the trees and said, you could talk to Hashem here. I took him and I'm like, you know, you can stand there and you could cry out to Hashem. I'm like, Hashem. And he was like, whoa. You know, he was a little bit shocked. At a certain point, he was like a little scared because I said it a little loud. I'm like, Hashem. You know, I was like, whoa. You know, like, but then later, you know, at home, at one time, like, you know, I said, I said, now we have to thank Hashem. And then he's like, thank you, Hashem. And then all of a sudden, he looked up and he's like, Hashem. <laughs> and he did the same way. Like, I did it. It makes an impact. We should educate our children. We should educate our loved ones to open up this, this vehicle of conversation to you and Hashem. It's such a precious thing. So many people, they, they live... They have, they have like, they're, they're in a fight with God. A lot of people, they're not, they're not sh- the shalom with the shalom. You know, they have, they have issues with God, right? So, so you know what? Usually, if, if you have a friend, if you have a family member that you have an issue with, what's the best thing? Bring it to the table. Let's sit down. Let's talk about it. You know what I mean? What are you going to do? You're just going to close the door and be like, no, I don't care. I'm not going to look at this guy for the rest of my life. At some point, you're going to, you know, Yom Kippur is going to come by. You're going to, you know, come on. You have to, you know, you, you know, you have to face your, 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 the one you love. So it's the same thing with God also. You can be bottled up, you can be heard about things. So talk to God about it. You know, if you're heard about something, talk to me. Hashem, I love you. You know, truth is, you know, you are the master, but I'm, I'm, I, it's hard for me to understand this thing. I, I need help. You know, trying to see that why, you know, why you did this to me, or maybe help me realize that for what purpose it is, or, or help me trust in you, that I'm, I'm lacking in trust, whatever it may be, whatever doubts, you maybe call out to him, reach out to him. You know, we don't do that. We, we, have, to, we have to utilize this vehicle. Yeah. It's half an hour, like, half an hour, like a magical number? Or so, like so the Rebbe says an hour or more, right? But, um, Rebbe... Um, Rav Moshe Bienenstock said from um, Rav Levi Yitzchak Bender that that hour doesn't necessarily have to be an hour straight. You can break it up in compartments. You could do, you could do let's say, in half hour in the morning, half hour at night. You could break it up in, tw- in 20 minutes, three times a day. The point is that you're involved in speaking to God. You have a certain time. If you want to be the Rebbe's advice, is an hour or more. Now, whatever you can do, if you want to build up for that. I spoke to a certain mishpia of mine years ago when I wasn't holding to do an hour. And I asked him, I said, listen, what, you know, if, what if it's an half hour? So he says, okay, so do a half hour, but yearn to do an hour. You know, ask him that, you should, that, he should, that Hashem should help you, that you should realize that you have an hour to do it. You know what I mean? A lot of times, sometimes you see, you do a half hour, then you're like, you know, I'll do a little more. It's okay, it's not so bad. And, and, and during that hour, you could be creative, by the way. You could sing to Hashem, you know, Rabbi Nachman has, he used, to, he used to sometimes have a little notebook. Sometimes when he's making, all of a sudden he realizes he made a beautiful tefillah in front of Hashem. He would jot it down. He'd be like, wow, that's pretty good. You know, he'd be like, write down, you know, wow, I, gotta, I wanna remember that one. You know, you could sing, you could, you could make your own nigunim to Hashem, your own songs. What do you think King David did? David Amalek, he said, no, he spoke to Hashem with a harp. He see, you know, imamish, you know, you, you, a person should do, we should do this. We, uh, the Rebbe teaches that we all have a spark of David Melch inside of us. We, have all, we all have sparks of the true tzaddikim. So we have that part. We have to exercise that part. Where it's not like a foreign thing. So I'm telling you, oh, you know, go off on some mountaintop somewhere, learn with some gurus, like how to do meditation. No, this is something that's inside of you. You know, it's something in your neshama that you can access. You just have to take off the layers. We're always running around. We're on cell phones. We're on, you know, buses, beepers, whatever we may, may be on. To take the time to be like, stop. Just stop. You know, all the just relax. Take some time out. Sit with Hashem. Focus. It's good. And you know what? You walk away from that. You're like, yeah, this is great. You have more. You have more of a consciousness of avodah Hashem in your day to day life if you're doing this practice. And he says not only that, but but all the tzaddikim that reach their levels, they use this vehicle of davening to Hashem. You know, they once saw the Chofetz Chaim. He was in the middle of the woods. 
he's screaming some 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 goyim came they thought you know they thought the, there was like a fire or some you know some, somebody was dying or something they saw those chavos chaim screaming so, so so they asked him you know what's going on he's like you know it's like I'm writing a sefer for Am Yisrael, you know, for the Jewish people. You know, they're going to be learning my sefer. Like, I want to make sure I'm writing okay, you know. And everyone, everyone did this. Every single person. You know, there's a story that, uh, you know, uh, I think the who was it, the Chazunish, or, that uh, he was sitting, uh, he was having a conference, and there was like Gedoli Yisrael sitting, and all of a sudden a bacher runs in the middle of the meeting, and he, he runs in with his Gemara Rebbe, you know. Is this uh, what is is this what Tosis means over here? Like when he says this question, this that, and then and, and he answers the question, and then and the Bachar like runs. He's like, okay, great, you know. He's like, he runs off, and, and then he continues the meeting with the other Gedol. Like, you know, what is this? This you know, we're having a meeting with Big Rabban, and this kid runs in with this question in Gemara. He says, you don't understand. He says, when this kid, he's stuck in his Gemara. He 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 doesn't eat. He doesn't sleep. He stands there screaming, davening, and bawling in front of Hashem, that he should open up his mind of why he doesn't understand the Gemara. So he says, for him, I make exceptions, like, you know, I answer his questions, you know. So I, I heard that story. That was like Rav Shach when he was a, a bacher, you know. That's how you become a godly. You got to talk. You got to scream. You got to cry. You know, they said about, they said about, about, about Rav Berlin. They used to catch him in Svas, you know, late at night, you know, by the Arizal's kever, not just davening by the Arizal's kever, he was on top of the kever, like banging me, like, help me, you gotta help my soul. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine that scene? You know, look, if we want help, if a person's drowning in the ocean, what are you gonna do? You're like, no, I need a little help, you know, like, throw me, like, you know. No, you're gonna be, you're gonna scream, like, help, you know, I need help, man. You're gonna go nuts. You got to. That's what we gotta do. We're drowning out there. It's, an, oh, it's nuts out there. We walk out of this door, it's not a war. We have to realize that. We're trying to be Yidin. We're trying to, we're trying to keep the Torah. You know what I'm saying? The Torah has a lot of requirements. You know, guard your eyes, this, that, you know. To be pure, wow. It's like the major, it's major avoda. So use a vehicle. You need the tools. You need armor. You need, you know, bullets. You need, you know. The Rebbe is telling you, I'm to, to daven. These are like your artillery. When you daven to Hashem, what, are you going to think you're going to do it on your own? Who could survive this gullus? The, the the way the world is right now? Are you kidding me? Rabbi Nachman said like two hundred years ago. He's like he's like there's gonna come a time such a flood of temptations and desires and apicorsis. You know this back in Europe. He was saying this, and he was seeing what's happening now. So he says that was. The, it, I'm, I'm sorry. Um, but like in his time, like I'm sure there was like their own type of like yeah. a little bit. The scholar movement was starting, but you know like like what's happening now. The desires, temptations, distractions. He says it's gonna it's gonna increase. You're going to see that's gonna be. And Rav Nassim said he knew that it was clear for future generations that the world it was gonna it was gonna get so much more intense. You know, it was obvious to people that were sitting by him that that was the direction he was going. Because like now in this time, I feel like when I, when I look back to like past generations, like like you almost like like I see like how like you could have seen that. Because like, but I don't, I don't you don't think about it like that. Right, like, right. Like you almost think like it was just as bad. Then, but like, right. No. Yeah. But like it's, it wasn't. Really it's mamish the, the level that it is. So we have to realize. So if we're in such a situation of sakana, like it exists, man is that such a situation that's of such danger that the Rebbe has given us advice how to come out, how to like lift our heads out of the water and not drown. So he says we hear. So. So he says, this is Shabbat Lekol Nefesh, Mikatzan Vad Gadol, Ki Kulam Yecholam Linhog Hanhagazu. Everyone can do this. Children, older people, everyone. Women. Val Yedeze Yavohu Lamala Gadola. You can come to tremendous levels from this, just from speaking to God in your own words in a private way. Asher Shiyoch is a praiseworthy, is a person that holds on to this practice. Gamtov, now he says another thing. He throws in another Eitzah about his bodice. It's a very good thing to do. Gamtov lasot mehatora tfila. To make from the Torah that you learn, to make that into tfilas. It's very interesting. Dahainu. Kishalomed o shomea eze mamar Torah metzadik Let's say you learn, especially when you learn a Torah from a true tzadik. Right? You learn something... You walk away from a shir, you're like, wow, it's really important, right? Azai yasim is etfilo. So he says, right away, make a prayer out of that. Dahayin, what does that mean? Levakish litchanem lefanav yisbarach. To beg Hashem, to come in front of Hashem when you're talking to Him. 
and to beg him, I'll call mash nemar sham be'ota maimer. All that that I learned in this maimer that we just learned, matai yizke gam hula volachose. When am I going to be zochet to do all this? Hashem, I just learned. I just sat down. We were learning. Wow, it's such an amazing thing to do. His spotted us and all the tzaddikim did it. It's such an amazing requirement. Shem, when are you going to open my mouth? When are you going to cause me to realize that it's an important thing? Help me realize that I can find the time. Help me find the time to be able to do such a practice and to be zochet to what the Rebbe is saying, meaning to make from that lesson that you're learning, whatever that may be, to try to make that into a prayer. That has a very lofty quality. The kama who rachot mizend, and you can beg Hashem. Wow, look, Hashem, so far from this. Vivakish mitu isbarch. She is a keol of all the chol and nemar shem bato meimer. Vamaskil vachafetz beemes. And the Rebbe ends off by saying that somebody that truly desires the truth, right? Yolichu Hashem bederach emes. Somebody that inside is neshama. He's like, I want the emes. I want the truth. You know what? It's not just like truth. It's emes. You know what I mean? It's like it's like being a person that I. I don't want to settle for living in this world like a, you know, just like a yeah, like a I don't know how to say it like a uh-huh. what uh-huh. Robot. Like, like not not a robot but just like you know like a mediocre sort of like existence like okay you know I dab and I learn and I am you no like if you want really you want to go you want to go for the gold you want a mamish you want to get uh, Gan Eden mamish you want to shoot for the highest. Which the Rebbe says also, he says, you shouldn't have an attitude that, oh, you know, Halavaya should be like this. That's like a Nebuchal attitude. Like, Halavaya should be like, you know, I should keep this, you know, I don't know about that. He says, he says drop that. You're, you're, we're all shy for the highest. Go for it. There's no reason why not. So he, so, so he says, if you, if, you, if you really want, if you really desire for that, he says, and if you put these things into practice, especially from setting time to ask Hashem for it, he says you'll get there. If you really desire that, Hashem will take you there. She, that, that what? He says over here, Yolichu Hashem emes v'yavin ba'atzmo You will come to realize on your own. Dover mitoch dover. Hashem will give you this ab- ability of bina, of eich lehisnaeg b'zeh. How you can properly do a spodotus on your level. How you should do it. Both in shu devar of divrei chen that your words should come out like words of grace in front of Hashem. Uta'anos nechonos. They should have nice tainas in front of Hashem. They should kivyochel like win him over. L'ratzoti yisbar shikar ve'u l'avodas ve'emes. That he should bring you close to him, to, to avodas Hashem in truth. Ve'inyan asichu zu ole l'makam gavol ma'od. And you should know that this inyan of this speech, that when you talk to Hashem from those words, it goes, it ascends to a very high place. And specifically, when you make from the Torah lessons that you learn, when you make from those, when you make them, those into prayers, from this, that causes tremendous delights in the heavens. You should know it. The Rav Nassim in Lakuti Alacha says that it's Bechinus like Kodesh HaKadashim. Why? The Holy of Holies was a place that in the, in the Holy of Holies where the Kohen Gadol went once a year, lifnai the in into that, that area where no man can go, what would he do in, in, in that place? He would daven to Hashem. So that's tefillah. And it happens to be that in the Aron HaKodesh, what's in the Aron HaKodesh? Is, is, is the, the second luchas, the first luchas, and the, and the Torah that, that Moshe wrote. The Torah, the Kitzur. It's a place where Torah and tefillah is coming together. If we could do that, if we do that practice, the Rebbe says it causes tremendous delight. It's mamish bechinas kodesh akadashim. You know, like it says that you know, like uh, in the Musar Svarim, it even brings down that, that a person should like try to remember to chazer over what he learned that day. Reb Nachman takes it a step further, not just to chazer over, but to make that into a tefillah, to make that Torah like intimate with, with between you and a, between you and a kodesh baruch Hu. That a person should know from that a person, you know, like Rabbi Nachman says, this whole world is a gesher time. Oh, it's a very narrow bridge. And the main thing, not to have fear. How can you not live in a state of fear? By doing this, by, by, by fortifying yourself, becoming a strong Jew. How do you become a strong Jew? By realizing that you don't have the strength. That's how you become a strong Jew. A Jew, if a Jew moves himself aside and he lets a Kodesh Baruch Hu's light shine through, then you're the most powerful yid. Moshe Rabbeinu, that, that the whole world respected. He brought Paro, the greatest leader, to, down to his knees. 
he was always mamish like uh, I'm nothing, it's all Hashem. He made himself into a vehicle that the light of Hashem should shine through. We have to realize that. You know, it says the Shechina spoke, Mitoch Grona Shal Moshe. The Shechina spoke it through the throat of Moshe when we were receiving the Torah. That means, Chasidus explains, that Kibyachl was as if Moshe Benu, like, was, so to speak, like dead, so to speak. He moved himself aside, it was just the light of Hashem. <coughs> right? And just, uh, I want to give a story about that, but before we do, just so, so to realize in our lives also, if we move ourselves aside and realize, I can't do it. You know, when a person, you know, a lot of Brasa Gadolim tell me, that the way to come to, in front of Kadesh Baruch Hu, facing all these temptations and desires is that you come in front of Hashem, you say, Hashem, I'm being honest with you, I can't do it. I'm a behemoth. I can't. You know, I have a lot of desires, and it's mamish driving me crazy. So I'm coming to you, I'm begging you, please help me. When you do that, imagine, imagine the Abish looking down, he's seeing his child say such a prayer before him. He's, he's, he's like helpless, he's looking to Abba, he's like a little baby, he's like, lift me up, please, I just, Abba. Which father wouldn't lift up their kid? No, no, suffer, get out of here. You know, like, come on, it's not like that. So, so the Abish would have Rahmanas on you, you could do the same thing. That's how to lift up. You come out there and be like, no, I'm going to be Shomer and Naim. I'm going to be this, that, I'm going to be that, the other. The Yetzirah is going to smack you up like there's no tomorrow. You have to realize it's all the light of Kaddish Baruch Hu. If we realize that we're nothing, we're humble, that it's all from Hashem, then you can let the light of Hashem shine through you. So Mitzvah Hashem, we should take these Eitzes, these true Eitzes, these Eitzes Nechonos, these proper advice, and we should utilize it in our lives. I just want to say that the, the, it's a short story with the Lubavitcher Rebbe because yesterday was the yard side of Rabbi Nachman Mendel Schneerson, that, uh, that uh, first of all, he was a Yid that uh, had amazing ability to, to wash out the souls of the Jewish people. It was unbelievable how he reached out to so many people. We have to be mocked that. And, um, you know, that, that, that with that ability that he had, you should know... There was uh, Shlomo Kavach who was saying, I was watching, he gives a eulogy online. They have a clip of this that he gave a eulogy for the Lubavitch Rebbe. It's just unbelievable just the way he talks. I'm telling you, it's really good out. If you have like, let's say, 15 minutes, take a look at the eulogy of Shlomo Kavach for the Lubavitch Rebbe. It's like, it's very moving. So one of the things was that he used to, Shlomo used to schlep souls to the Lubavitch Rebbe. He used to find different people. He, he used to have a thing that whenever he rides the subway, He's going to talk to one Jew. He's going to try to, like, reach out to a Jew, you know? And sometimes, you know, he used to ride the subway back and forth because he made this thing that, like, I have to find a Jew. And sometimes, you know, until he found, he's like, okay, you know, this guy, you know? So, uh, so one time, he was up learning, like, with the Lubavitcher Rebbe uh, to, like, four in the morning, you know? And uh, he said it was, it was Ghanedin. It was just no question about it. It was just total Ghanedin. And then he said that um, he, call, he, goes, he goes on the subway and he sits on the subway, you know, really early in the morning and he sees, you know, it, it was Friday, it was actually, it was Erev Shavuos. Shavuos was uh, on Shabbos that year. So he sees a Jew in front, he sees a guy in front of him, he knew it was a Yid, you could tell. And, uh, and he was glowing, he was really happy. So he goes up to him and he says that, you know, he says, you know, uh, he says, my holy brother, you know, please tell me, you know, your face is shining, you know, what's, uh, what are you so dandy about? So he says, uh, after realizing his name, you know, that he's Jewish, and he says to him, yeah, he's like, you know, he's like, yeah, I should tell you, you know, I'm, I'm getting married, you know, this Saturday, you know, in a church to my non-Jewish girlfriend. And he's just like, he's gleaming, you know. And then Shlomo's like, wow, that's really cool. He's like, I'll tell you, you know, I just, um, I just left a big, very holy man, you know, a few stops away. Maybe you want to go get a blessing from him before you go to the, you know, to the canopy. You know, maybe you get a blessing from a holy person, you know. So then he's like, okay, you know. So, uh, so the guy goes, he, he, mamish, uh, he, he takes him to the Bab Shrebi, you know, and, uh, and Bab Shrebi opens the door and uh, he says to him, you know, <laughs> he says, Rebbe, and the, the rabbi was looking, he's like, you know, like, okay, Shlom, like, what'd you bring me here? Like, who is this guy? And then he's like, he's like, Rabbi, you know, this guy's getting married on, on, on Shavuos, you know, in a church. There's not good, non, the non-Jewish girlfriend, you know? What do you say? <laughs> so, so, that's, so the rabbi says, okay, you know, he says, let me just bring him in, you know, just wait outside. And like, the guy comes in there and, 
he says he's later he goes you know he sat out there for a few hours you know until seven in the morning and the Bob Shelby opens the door the guy comes out his, his eyes are red with tears you know and like and he says he says Shalom and we take him to put on tefillin and then he should be with us for Shabbos and he just washed out his neshama. It's like unbelievable. He says another time he took a guy. You know, one time we were sitting with the Bible trivia, A guy walks in, and he starts saying, uh, "He's like, oh, you guys, you know, uh, you guys got to realize who the real Messiah is. You know, so to speak. You know, uh, he also has a Jewish mother. You know, and like uh, you just got to realize the real one." He said a whole speech, and he was so involved in that idea of you know the the false Messiah and, and another Jew and. Um, this was a very hard case, you know what I mean? He was like really embedded, and he was like, so, so, um, so it happened to be that it was before Rosh Hashanah, so it was right before, and it was right before, and it was right before Tekiyas on Rosh Hashanah. This guy was like, you know, lingering around, and all of a sudden, like right before Tekiyas Shofar, the Babshev looks up at Shlomo, and he's like, where's this guy? This, this this guy the, the messianic you know so he's like I don't know, like they, they looked him the whole you know seven saying like, they found they tracked him down and he's like he's like bring him here and he took the red the voucher he took him and he put him under his talus for tekiah's chauffeur he went under the talus and the voucher read it's like a jews for jay guy he says that after the tekiah's chauffeur he came out from under there and shlomo comes up to him he's like He's like, so what do you say? The guy was like, he's like, I, I, don't, I can't tell you anything. All that I can tell you is, is that it's a miracle that I'm still alive. <laughs> <laughs> and the rest is history, you know what I mean? He's like, he's like, he stayed in Grand Heights, you know. So I'm saying, we have to realize one other thing, just throw one other story, with your permission. Um, the Bob Trevi, a lot of times, would, uh, he would speak hours, you know, and, and the Bible Trump didn't have, I don't know, at a certain point in his life, he also, he didn't have, um, he, he wouldn't, he, he wouldn't put in dentures, because he held, it was a chumrah, it was a basar b'chalav, and he would speak for hours, it was very difficult to talk for such a long time, and a lot of times, even after a long speech, he would give a signal, there was something called a sicha, and sometimes he would give something called a mimer, a mimer means it, it involves Kabbalah and Hasidus, right, very deep. So what would the, what would the, they would do in Chabad? They would all stand up, and the Babatrei would give like the signal that he wants to say over a minor, and they would sing a nigan. It was called the nigan hachana, the nigan of preparation, very deep, slow nigan. And then the Babatrei he would grab onto something physical, like a handkerchief or the table, uh, in my opinion, so that he could still stay in this world. And he would speak with his eyes closed intensely, like heavy duty Kabbalah like in Hasidus, like really intense, like revelations. So uh, this was after the Bab Trevi had his first stroke. So they got a doctor, and not, you know, not, he wasn't so religious, <coughs> you know, they called him Dr. George. And he came to Crown Heights, you know, to monitor the Bab how he's going how he's doing, especially when he's giving his speeches. I mean, he'd give a sikh, you know, sometimes it would regular, heart rate would go up, would go down. It's a documented story. He says, uh, when the rabbi first gave the signals, the nigga Nachan, they would sing this song, and you see the heart beat normal. All of a sudden, like right before the rabbi like, started speaking, and this guy was back, you know, back behind the curtain, backstage, all of a sudden, uh, the thing would go to f flat line. Like, what? The Bible he's dying. All of a sudden, he comes behind the curtain, he comes on. And he sees the Bible Trevi holding on the table, and he's like talking, like, Like, what? And you run back and see, again, like, flatline. What? We come back, and the Bible Trevi's talking. And like, this happened every time the Bible Trevi was going to give a mimer. It was unbelievable. He was just, he was just like, this, according to science, it doesn't make sense. So then he realized that some things are beyond science, that it has to do with ruchliness and godliness. And, 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 and it has to do with the true tzaddik speaks, that the shechina speaks from the mouth of the tzaddik. And it, sometimes the tzaddik might not even be there, so to speak. He's a conduit to bring the light of Hashem in. So we have to know, so we're coming to gather to learn teachings of a tzaddik. And this tzaddik, his name is Rabbi Nachman of Breslov. And he says the, that the Maila El Yona, that's Gedola Min Hakol, the loftiest practice that we could ever hold onto in this world before we go up after 120 is... 
the speech, the simple talk between you and God every day. It's the most precious thing that you can invest. You know, just to let you know, you know, so like a plug, that sometimes like once a week, you know, we, a few friends, we go actually, you know, we, sometimes we down Nates, we go after Nates because it's very early, or sometimes we go before Nates in the middle of the night, we go out into the fields. We speak to the massive universe. So sometimes I send out a text. You guys probably get them like 50 times, you know. So, so, uh, so Mitzvah Shem, you know, if you ever want to, by all means, it's fun, it's together, we go, we split off, and then we meet back. Mitzvah Shem would be really great. So even if you can't come with us, but wherever you are, everywhere you go, you know, Mitzvah Shem, you should uh, know that Hashem is watching you, and you should be davik to Kaddish Baruch every day of your life. Shkaya, shkaya.